Hello, once again, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com and today I am going to do a video with medium format versus 35 millimeter in a way, not really versus, this is not a battle of the ages, but I have the Sony A9. I own the Sony A9. I love the Sony A9. It offers versatility, amazing image quality, fantastic low light capabilities, amazing mind boggling speed, versatility in the way that you can use almost any lens out there via adapters whether it's like a M, like a screw mount, Canon, Nikon, what have you. Plus many manufacturers today are making native E-mount lenses. In fact in this little shootout I use a Voigtlander 65 f2 APO E-mount. I also have the Hasselblad X1D which I've been talking a lot about lately because I also own this camera. I feel blessed to be able to own both the A9 and the X1D, and this offers a sensor over 60% larger than the A9, medium format. Um, it's a little bit taller than the A9, a little bit lighter when you add the lenses, and uh, it's mirrorless, so you can use it as a walk around camera, as well as those tripod landscape shots when you want the most it can give. But here I'm going to go over low light shooting at high ISO, uh, I shot the A9 and the X1D, and here's some photos. With the A9, I used a 65mm f2 APO. With the X1D, I used the 90mm 3.2. Uh, so we're going to show a shot here first, and I let the cameras, I put them in A mode, aperture priority, and I let them choose their own metering and ISO, auto ISO. This is X1D. ISO 25,600 at f3.2 and to me this image is just gorgeous. The grain structure is beautiful. This is ISO 25,600. The camera needed that because of the slower f3.2 aperture but remember 90 f3.2 is equivalent to about a 70 f2 in 35 millimeter. I took this shot right after with the Sony. It shows ISO 8000. This was at f2 with the 65 and a little bit different kind of rendering, contrast. These are processed from raw files, basically a raw conversion and these were converted to black and white within the raw conversion just by taking the saturation slider down, easy and basic. Next image, X1D. It's very dark in the lost leaf, very dark. Um, you have literally a red light uh, above the performers, a very dim red light. Um, and I focused on his hand here playing the bass and uh, it was a challenge but I used manual focus and I didn't nail it 100% but I got close enough. Here's the Sony version taken right after, this is with the A9 at F2. Now at f2, I'm going to get the equivalent depth of field with the Hasselblad at f3.2. But here I was trying to capture a little bit of emotion in the player's face. Again, it was so dark in here. But the Sony was able to go to 8000 due to the f2 aperture, which uh, gathers more light over f3.2, obviously. Here is the X1D. Um, again, this is at f3.2 wide open. And uh, you can see the black and white tones here. It's going to come into a close-up here so we can see more details. But I'm very happy with the Hasselblad's dynamic range, the tonality, the grain structure. As well I should be. It's a damn expensive camera, right? Um, but it works lovely in this low-light scenario. The A9 also totally rocked this. This is the same performer as you can see. Shot at f2 with the 65 Voigtlander. Let's get in a little bit closer. Both of these cameras were really delivering the goods. Uh, I would say the X1D offered a better dynamic range with the highlights. It offered a little bit richer of a file. It offers uh, better high ISO. Uh, like at ISO 25,000, it looks as good as Sony's 10,000. Here's the X1D just to test some color of a mural outside at night. You can see the deep color here. Um, it looks really, really nice. We're going to go a little closer. Nice details, nice color. This is a straight raw conversion 
from the X1D, no processing here at all. And I have the same shot with the Sony, which is close. It's a little more um, faded looking or not as bold in the colors, but it still looks very nice. Again, the Sony A9 is half the cost of the X1D. And 99% of us do not need what the X1D offers unless you know, you're really shooting landscape and you want that extra ounce of detail that medium format can give. Remember, the X1D has a 50 megapixel sensor. Here's one from the A9. Uh, again, low light. There's a little blowout on his hand. Uh, it's very hard to not blow out highlights in this club due to the way the lighting is set up. But um, again, these are all manual focus. Uh, the manual focus with the Sony and the X1D. The Sony has a better EVF. The one in the X1D is more like the A7R2. Here's an X1D shot. Um, again, it was I, I was off on the exposure, but I like the moodiness of it uh, for some reason. It just has a certain mood to it that I like. And again, the grain structures at these ISOs, like 25,600, to me are very film-like. They're not all chunky and messy like a lot of digital cameras are. Um, I tried focusing on the base uh, fretboard. And here's one outside. This is the X1D at 25,600. Uh, I shot the same scene with the Sony, and the Sony only needed ISO 10,000. But ISO 25,000 on the X1D is similar to what you get from the A9 at ISO 10,000. Here's a close-up of the X1D. You can see the detail and color even at this high ISO. And this was taken at night uh, on a street. There was a street light above, you know. Here's the Sony. The color is a little washed out, has a little color cast to it. But again, for the money, the Sony is performing very, very well. I own both of these cameras. I love both of these cameras. Um, I feel blessed to be able to own them. I love both. And uh, I, I love the X1D for many reasons. Uh, much more than just the output and the cropping power and the dynamic range. I explained it all in my review. But I wanted to show here that a good 35 millimeter full frame can indeed compete with medium format. Just because I own the X1D, and this is the X1D shot here. Next I'll show the A9. But just because I own the X1D doesn't mean I think it's better than the A9 or better than everything else. It's a tool. It's a tool that one chooses based on his or her preferences, wants, and needs. And again, it's all in my review of why I chose the X1D. And you can read my A9 review, there's the A9 version, to see why I chose the A9. I use them both for different things. The A9 for video, for using M lenses, um, for speed. I use the X1D to take me back to that slowing down process. Um, it helps me pick my shots better. It gives me more creativity or it makes me feel like I do. It inspires me more to use it. It's, it's like a work of art. This is Steve from stefophoto.com. If you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.